it is now time to go into our Reinhardt review. Um, a little bit different than what the last two reviews will be like. I don't have my notes pre-prepared, so it's not like I'm going to highlight stuff. I'm going to write and talk as I go, so it might be a little bit slower because remember, I'm not very good at multitasking, so it will be probably a little bit rougher. <laughs> that being said, though, um, we're going to look at some Atlanta gameplay, and I'm going to do... We're going to look at Gator specifically. I'm going to do some Atlanta gameplay. We're going to look at Havana. That is the map that we will be going with because I know both these teams play Rush on Havana. I just want to double check to make sure I'm not crazy and both teams are going to run Rush here. Okay, we're good. We're chilling. We're good. Going to back up a little bit and then we're going to get into it like before. Uh, I will have chat open on my phone again. If people have questions or whatnot, I will be here. I'll be around ready to go. Just give me a second. It's just reconnecting back. Uh, we'll close it for a quick second and then I'll reopen it. And then we'll be good to go. Alright, sweet. Awesome. Okay. So, Reinhardt. We're going to do it like this because I don't want to... Let's lower this a little bit. Perfect. So what to know about Reinhardt here? Well, we're going to look at some key things. I just realized that I actually... <laughs> I can't look at my second monitor to look at my notes. So give me a second. I got to take a picture of this and then kind of go from there. So I won't have chat open because I'm going to need chat. I need to find a solution for this. But I'm going to need chat... Or my phone, sorry, not my chat. I need my phone for my notes. So, pushing back into it. Reinhardt, we're going to focus very heavily on the fundamentals for Reinhardt. So his movement, his positioning. These are the key things that I find most Reinhardt players really struggle with. It's not even pathing a lot of the time. A lot of the time it is, how should I position myself? How should I move? Like, when should I move? Like, where should I move to? Because a lot of Reinhardt players that I've talked to are always pretty much telling me, oh, like, you, you have to go in hard. Like, you just go in, go in. And other Reinhardt players I talk to are like, ah, oh, well, you know... I always walk in the open and I just get instantly destroyed. Like, what am I supposed to do at that point, right? So, this is why we're going to focus on this. When we look at the abilities from Reinhardt, we're going to notice that his abilities are very much more specific details to his fundamental play or the fundamental play of movement and positioning. So, they add to that comparatively to being a separate part for Reinhardt. So, that being said, we're going to start first with movement. Ooh. Yeah, we'll use... We'll use this size, I think. Yeah, this is a little bit big for me. We're going to use this size still. Okay. So, movement is the first topic that we're going to focus on here. So, what about movement do we need to kind of consider and we need to focus on here? I'm going to move my phone over here so I can see a little bit better. All right. So first things first. How should you move as Reinhardt? Where should you go? How should you path? Well, a big thing I always say is terrain to terrain. Now, what do I mean by terrain to terrain? I've brought this up in multiple of my other guides before. And what I mean by terrain to terrain is just look to move from one cover to the next cover. If you're moving from open to open or cover to open, it's not going to work many times. Even open to cover is better, but you always want to try to go to some sort of some terrain. That is the big part about this. You want to move to some sort of terrain. Instead of that, I'll say need terrain. All right. 
So we understand how important terrain is from Reinhardt, and it's going to be a big talking point that we have throughout this guide. But a big thing that we need to now understand is, okay, well, we know that basically in 6v6s, whatever, wherever we're pathing to or anything like that, or whenever we're trying to fight, we're moving from terrain to terrain, sure. But now we have a weird kind of situation now. What do we do when we're up numbers? Or, well, actually, before we do that, let's focus on when to move forward, actually. Or when to engage. Well, when do I engage? Well, we can change that with this. I should look to engage based off of key things. So what are the key things that we're looking for? Well, the key things that we're looking for here is we're looking for probably a May, May wall, May freeze, or an ultimate to engage, right? So maybe it's a diva bomb, maybe it's a B, maybe it's a window, right? So we will change that from when do I engage to engage when you see a May wall, you see a May freeze, you see an alt to start, right? Start fight. There we go. Again, you're not making the first move as Reinhardt. Even though you're leading the pack, you're moving with your team or helping your team move, you are going based off of things that are happening around you, such as the May Wall, such as the Alt, such as a freeze happening, right? You're reacting more than actually leading a charge kind of thing. You're letting someone else take control, and then you're just brute forcing and moving so your team can take the space with you. So, again, then now we're going to go to the point that I was saying before of when are when you're up members and when you're down members. Well, what do you do? How do you move when you're up numbers or when you're down numbers? So when you're up numbers, and that means you are have a advantageous situation where you have more heroes up than your enemy team. Well, that's going to equate to you being slow and steady. What do I mean by slow and steady here? I mean don't feel like I have to do something like we're up one person run at them like put uh, don't even worry about anything no that's how mistakes happen so what do you want to do walk at them slowly don't run at them don't rush at them you have the man advantage once you have the man advantage as Reinhardt the big thing that you need to understand again you want to try to kind of survive your damage is very strong you're most of the time the secondary carry in most of the compositions that are played around you so you need to be enabled you need to stay alive so if that is the case when you're up in numbers the worst thing you can do is just create chaos and run at them you want to stay organized you want to slowly win right or slowly push your advantage and from there it's up to the enemy now to try to win the fight so the enemy will try to make plays to try to catch you off guard as you slowly choke them out, as you slowly win. And that's the only thing you got to be careful for. And that's the big thing for when you're down numbers. So when you're down numbers, I just talked about when you're up, the enemy's always going to try to, you know, make a play. They're going to try to do something. And when I say they're going to try to make a play, they're going to do something crazy to try to win the fight then. Maybe Ryan's going to pin. Maybe they're going to try to do a huge flank into your back line. Maybe they're just going to full send five members onto your support, your Baptiste or a Lucio or a McCree, right? Or a Sim. That is when you have to be very cautious when you're up numbers. But when you're down numbers, that's when you need to try to do something. You need to try to make a play, is what I call it. So, we've talked about movement. We understand movement and what you're supposed to do with it. How it's important and what you should look for at the start, in the middle, always being by terrain. When should you engage? What should you do based off of number situations around you? Now that we kind of understand that, let's go into positioning a little bit more. I talked about movement going from ter terrain to terrain, moving so that you always have cover. Positioning will go through this a little bit more. And as I said, terrain is a large part of Reinhardt's kit. And a big thing that I need to really drill into you, similar to what I did with Symmetra in terms of safety, I'm going to do the same thing for Reinhardt. You need to have some sort of terrain by you. So you need to prioritize, is the best way I can put this, or a good way to kind of remember this kind of stuff is... Ooh, 
There we go. You need to prioritize lowering your hitbox. Now, what do I mean by lowering your hitbox? Well, I'm going to quickly... Whoop. Okay, well... Uh, no. Okay. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'll kind of quickly talk about this because I, I wouldn't be able to draw with it anyways. This is your hitbox. Your hitbox is 360 degrees. By playing terrain, you can maybe reduce your hitbox by a little bit. So instead of it being this full circle, maybe you reduce it by a quarter. So now instead of it being 360, you have a wall here that you can play around. Well, now it went from 360 to all of this, right? 360 take away 90 is, I believe, two, 270. 80, yes. I am correct. 270 degrees now. And a lot of the times, people won't be able to shoot behind you because your team is behind you, right? So realistically speaking, you probably reduce your hitbox instead to this little small portion here that's sticking out, which is likely 90 degrees, right? You can use your shield to block some of that. Obviously, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is why it's so important and I stress it so much. Be by some sort of terrain. Because if you're by some sort of terrain, as a Reinhardt, you have now lowered your hitbox. If you were in the open during this whole time, you have a 360 degree hitbox the entire time. You are a walking, walking alt charge battery. And not even just an alt charge battery. You're or you are pretty much at that point going to be a liability to your team. Again, yes, Reinhardt has his own shield, and I will talk about that a little bit more. But remember, Reinhardt's shield, it doesn't last forever. It's a 1.6k shield that will eventually go down, right? So, as I was saying, big thing that you need to keep in mind here, right? When we're talking about, specifically, positioning for Reinhardt, is you need to really prioritize... Lowering your hitbox. And now we just talked about that by looking to, instead of saying always, I'll say play terrain as much as possible. Which means, just like I talked about, you want to avoid you want to avoid playing open areas as much as possible, right? You see the difference between these two things, right? If you're positioning, you always want to lower your hitbox, right? And since you're a Reinhardt, I can't tell you to anger off somebody. You lead. You are the person that your team is following. You're the one that takes space for your team. You need to understand what creates safety for me, what creates me to go forward, what makes it so that I know I can keep my HP for a longer period of time. This is what allows you to keep your HP for a longer period of time. This is what allows you to survive for a longer period of time. Positioning. Boom. Done. Now we go into the fun stuff. We go into the abilities of Reinhardt. And as I said, abilities are the type of things that allow you to, again, build on these fundamental things and allow you to be more successful and survive or do better with these fundamentals. So, looking at that, we're going to talk about a shield first. Why? Because shield is directly impacting both your movement and your positioning. So what's the thing about shield here? Well, I'm not going to talk about, while well, you use shield to block damage. Everyone knows that, right? But what's the key thing that you have to keep in mind? Well, how do you properly utilize your shield? That's a good question, right? How do you properly utilize your shield? Well, I know that I'm looking to utilize my shield specifically to block damage, right? So that I take less damage from the enemy team, so that I can stay alive for longer periods of time, so I can move in specific areas. So the first thing that we'll kind of do is, well, we just talked about playing terrain as much as possible, lowering your hitbox as much as possible. So realistically, what should be happening here? Well, you should be toggling... You should be toggling your shield 
as when you don't need to help your team or you don't need to do a large rotation, you should be toggling your shield. And the way I kind of think about this is you juggle between your HP and shield. So remember, Reinhardt is a 500 HP hero. Half, about half of his HP, a little bit, probably less than half, is armor, which means he takes reduced damage. Add into the fact that you're receiving healing from two members of your team. You have support from an off tank. Most of the time it's a D.Va or it's a Zarya who's going to either shield you and absorb some of the damage you take or DM the damage that you're going to take, right? Again, absorbing the damage you're going to take. You're not always going to be taking damage when your shield is down. So if you bring into perspective utilizing terrain, utilizing your own HP, and utilizing your shield in some situations, you will always be able to have a high uptime on your shield. You'll always be able to have a high HP shield because you're looking to juggle between multiple different resources, right? What are these resources that we're talking about? Well, these resources are your shield. These resources are your HP. The other resource is terrain. The thing that's natural on the map, right? And they will always be there. Those three things, taking out your entire team, those three resources will always be there. And they will always help you, right? Obviously, some of it relies on your teammates healing you, yes. But this is how you keep your shield up for longer periods of time. This is how you're able to close distance really fast and not have to use your shield just to walk all the way somewhere, right? Especially if it's something quick. So, toggling your shield when you're moving around between places, when you don't have to protect your team, is a key thing that you need to do. Well, how else do I properly utilize my shield then? We talked about rotations earlier, large rotations, rotations or areas where we're pushing and my team needs my shield because it's too open or because if I don't have my shield up, they could die during that large cross time, right? So we need to hold shields on rotations or large rotations is a big thing, right? which I would equate to four slash six seconds. Okay. And I will add just in case no terrain or little terrain. Why do I add this? Because if there's a lot of terrain where they can't really shoot you that much, well, then you don't need to hold up your shield, obviously, right? Doi. But if there is no terrain or very little terrain, you probably have to hold your shield up a lot longer, right? Holding, taking into consideration that, why else would you have to hold your shield up? Well, let's look at it like this. I need to hold my shield up if I'm maybe getting frozen by a May, right? Why else would I have to hold my shield up? I'd have to hold my shield up potentially for myself specifically when I have no armor left. Why do I say that? Well, think about it like this. I just talked about the three key resources to keep you alive, to be able to take a beating but still hold space for a long period of time or move very effectively is your HP, shield, and terrain, right? I'll add terrain to this as well. So if those are the big things that you're going to do to juggle or the three resources you're going to use, right? Well then, now one of the resources are gone. You have to use your HP and you have to use your shield, or sorry, you have to use your shield and you have to use terrain. Terrain is great when they're not engaging on you, right? You can still use terrain to kind of dance around the enemy there, but they can still rush you past the terrain. So the only other thing you have is your shield and backing up so that you can try to reduce your hitbox so they have to go into you, right? So this is why it's really important that you hold your shield during this time as well, right? So now we understand, well, when should I toggle my shield? When should I hold my shield? Is this the proper way to utilize my shield? Yeah, it is, right? At least in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to utilize a shield. So, first cooldown, out of the way. 
Next cooldown to talk about. We're going to talk about Fire Strike next. Because Fire Strike, again, a very straightforward thing. There's not a lot to Fire Strike in my opinion. What are you going to look to use it for mainly most of the time? Well, I'm going to look to use it for damage, right? And I, I categorize... I categorize it as spam damage, right? Most of the time, you're not fire shooting a fire strike when you're in melee range and there's people fighting you and you can swing your hammer. Your hammer does more damage than your fire strike would, right? And if you use your fire strike, that's two seconds where you can't do anything. You're stuck in an animation, right? So you don't want to do that while someone's maybe fighting you. So realistically, you're doing it when you're out of range. When you can't do anything else, you have to hold kind of your shield or hold or wait for the fight to kind of happen. Um, or you're walking forward and, you know, you see a bunch of people kind of stacked up. You want to throw a fire strike. Well, when do I get value from my fire strike, though? How can I hit a lot of people with my fire strike? Well, key thing to keep in mind if you're trying to get large ult charge from your fire strike or hit a lot of members, get a decent bit of damage, is... You need to keep in mind with the fire strike, similar to what I talked about with Anna yesterday, tight areas. If you want to hit a very big fire strike, you need to make sure that the enemy can't really move around that much, right? If they are in an open area and you're trying to go for a fire strike, you can still do it, but don't expect it to get a lot of value. If you see them towards a choke and they're both, all of them are, four of them, let's say, or three of them are holding a choke, and you see that, you can toss a fire strike, probably will get much more value, probably will help you build your out charge more. Might not kill somebody instantly, but it will get you something to help you be more successful, right? That being said, something else you need to keep in mind. If the enemy team has a matrix or bubble, so they have Zarya, or they have, um, excuse me, sorry, they have D.Va, you need to bait out Matrix or Bubble. Because that is the one thing that will stop your Fire Strike from dealing damage, right? So being valuable. So it's a key thing to kind of keep in mind. You need to keep track of Matrix timing. You need to keep track if they have Bubble up or not. You specifically don't have to. Your team can call it out for you. But a big thing is keeping track of those and being able to use your Fire Strike in those tighter areas will help you be able to get more success from those Fire Strikes. Again, so looking at the damage side and the spam side, next thing kind of goes into the only other usage I can think of off the top of my head for Fire Strike, which is Mind Gaming. And in brackets, I have Shatter here. So why do I have Shatter here in brackets? Well, well, we'll do Shatter versus Shatter here so that it's a little bit easier. Like I said, Fire Strike isn't an insanely great ability. It doesn't really give you much as Reinhardt because you want to be in melee range. Fire Strike does not allow you to get a lot of value in the melee range. But the way that you can do it is you can fake Fire Strike. So remember, you can put down your shield, make it look like you're going to Fire Strike, and bait out a Shatter from the enemy team, right? Or you can look to Fire Strike when they think that you're not going to Fire Strike, right? So it's a way where you can get into your opponent's head, especially another opposing Reinhardt, and make them think, oh, is he going to Fire Strike? Is he not going to Fire Strike? He Fire Strike last time. He didn't. I'm going to go for it this time. You fake it, you force out a Shatter from the enemy team. You just pretty much cancelled a very impactful ultimate there so again it goes back to the stage of it can't be damage oriented statistically like that but it can be a good psychological kind of game you can play with the enemy especially if they have another reinhardt right or if they have a diva or if they have something else right shatter versus shatter is just a good example of the mind game another one is with if you're you have a zarya on your team right you can bait out a little bit of matrix you don't have to bait out matrix there's a lot of different things so fire strike is a mind game kind of tactic it's another thing aside from just the damage aspect of it so talked about fire strike talked about mind games next thing we're going to talk about is pin my favorite thing to talk about why is this my favorite thing to talk about oh boy you guys don't understand the stuff that I had to go through when talking about PIN. Decod... Oh, okay. So, giving my experiences about Reinhardt's and PINs, I hate this ability with a passion. I hate it, hate it, hate it. Why do I hate it? Because using Decod, a player that I coached that was in Tier 2 Contenders that I worked with for a very long time, he would go for PINs and get value with PINs every single time. 
example of players that didn't get as much value with pins very often. Doge, which was a player that I coached last year on Raspberry Racers, and Gig, a player that I've coached before in the past. It's not that they're not getting they're making the wrong or they are making the wrong play in my eyes and yes they aren't getting a lot of value but the reason they're not is because pin is a very big thing where it's like oh they see they can get a kill but what happens after the pin a lot of people don't think about what happens after the pin right especially when you're ahead in a fight they don't think what happens after right another person that gets great pin value health health was one of the best reinhardts in my opinion at pin value and to explain pins to you, realistically speaking, this is my thought process on pin. You should rarely look to use this ability. Unless, key thing here is unless, right? So let's talk about the reasons why you would pin here. Well, number one, You're countering an enemy Reinhardt pin, right? You don't want one of your teammates to eat a pin. You don't want to eat a pin. So you want to counter the enemy's Reinhardt pin and force him on the ground like you so that the fight stays in the same area or he doesn't get a kill, right? Simple, nothing very difficult. Next reason why you should probably look to pin. Well, and this is why I hated it the most. You're looking to make a play. So, this is why I hated pin. Hated, 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 hated pin. So many Reinhardts I've worked with have just gone for pins. Give me, I'll give you the scenario. We are up two members. The Reinhardt sees he could maybe hit a pin. He tries to go for the pin. He misses the pin. He is now all the way in the enemy spawn, nowhere close to the fight. He is about four seconds away from the fight. Everyone else on my team is a little bit low. The enemy team is four man strong. They use, let's say, I don't know, a blizzard or they're able to get two kills instantly. Well, guess what? Your two man advantage is now gone. You as Reinhardt have not been able to get into the fight in time. You did not secure the fight. You have just threw the fight away for your team. This is why I hate pin so much, but this is why pin is such a powerful thing. Because I just talked about the worst case scenario for pin that I see happen many times. How about the best case scenario for pin? I'll give you an example from last year with us Raspberry Racers when we played against British Hurricanes, which had help on our t uh, the enemy team. This guy, we would win the neutral fight. So the best way for me to put it is we, we have a large advantage. We got to kill. Helv now just decides to randomly pin. My Ryan's not close to Helv. Helv kills one of my DPS players, or he kills one of my support players. Well, guess what? It's now a 5v5. He's in the fight. He got a free kill. This is still winnable for them. So remember when I talked before about making a play when you're down numbers? So like running it down on someone, or maybe going for a pin when you're moving? This is a key example when you want to look to use pin. Yes, you might be in Africa. Yes, you could be close to the enemy team, right? The whole point of the pin is you could potentially get a kill. That is the key thing. Right when you're losing the fight, you want chaos. You want to try to make it so that you can disrupt the enemy team in terms of their thought process, in terms of what they want to do. And if you can get a free kill, that's great. If you can force the enemy team to split up, that's even better. Because then you are now maybe more organizing than the enemy team or at best or worst, I should say, you're unorganized, the enemy team's unorganized, you've just now forced maybe a 5v6 where a bunch of them are isolated. Maybe their supports are completely isolated from their team, so they're going to die. Or maybe it's more so a matter of, you got a kill onto a support, well guess what, they're all scattered, one of them is towards the left side, one of them is towards the right side, one of them is in your back line, and the other support is right by you, well guess what? The rest of your team is grouped up on that left side. They're going to kill the guy on the left, and you're going to kill maybe the support, or you just are going to try to live. You can regroup faster. You can regroup better, right? So, that is most of the time the other way that you'll look to use a pin. So, what's the final way you can look to use pin? 
this to me is a maybe this is a very big question mark could work could not work but the other way you can look to use pin if there's a wall nearby so if there are any walls nearby where you're not right when you pin you're not going to go all the way to the enemy's spawn then sure go for it if it's not even like a foot in front of you like literally a step in front of you go for it why not you could i've seen people do it with may walls i've seen people do it with terrain close right again the whole thing with pin is pin is another example of a mind game but a mind game of a thing that you don't want to do very often again a lot of the time if you notice with these points with pin it's when you're down numbers. It's when you need to do something or you need to stop the enemy from being able to make a crazy play, right? So that is a key thing you need to think about as Reinhardt. Pinning will get you more separated from your team, cause you to lose potentially winnable fights or fights that you're already winning. But it can do the opposite effect as well. You're losing a fight. It can win you a fight, right? So that's the thing you need to understand with pin that a lot of Reinhardts don't really understand with pin. It's there as a way to make a play and turn the tables on the fight or do something unexpected. But many of the times you want to make sure if you're going to do that unexpected play or if you're going to do that play, you need to make sure that either you're not going to be a detriment in that fight, so you're you're going to be close by to your team after the pin, or you need to make sure that it doesn't matter if you're going to be far from your team. What matters is you got a kill and it's still winnable at that point. This goes into our last point of shatter. Reinhardt's ultimate. So, with Shatter, I'm going to talk about how can you look to guarantee hit a shower, Shatter almost every single time. Similar to Anna. How can I guarantee hitting this every single time? How can I, how can I always get value? from this ultimate well it's in the first thing that i just said i hear so many people that tell me with shatter oh well i just want to hit a shatter okay well in this scenario that i see you could have hit one person with the shatter but you decided to go for five players you try you try to go for a big play why oh i thought it would look cooler okay well why why not just hit the may on the ground kill the may and then guess what you're up a you're up a member in that fight it doesn't matter yeah, that's true. That's right. That is the key thing that you need to think about for Shatter. It doesn't matter about the big play. It doesn't matter about, oh my gosh, that was crazy. What matters, first and foremost, is look to get value. Value all the time over the big play. The big play will happen sometimes. Sometimes it won't happen. Just because you're not making big plays does not mean you're not getting value with Shatters. I'd rather get someone that hits 90% of his shatters, gets a kill with 90% of his shatters, than someone that hits 20% of his shatters, but makes a big play with 20% of those shatters. That's what. If I were to look at an attack and defense side on a payload or anything like that, 20%, you probably maybe build it six times, three on each side, maybe four. 20% is like two. Two out of eight, one out of six kind of thing, right? I'd rather have the guy that hits five and we get a kill every single time. That means we have an advantage in every single fight, right? Again, don't need the big play. Just need to look to get value. So we talk about that. That is in terms of just a little bit of a mental kind of hump that people have to get over. It doesn't matter about the big. It matters about getting something, right? Now we'll look a little bit more at, well, what are key things or key variables that I can look at in game that will let me hit the shatter first and foremost if they have an enemy Reinhardt right or if they have any sort of barriers set a barrier I'll put shield here look at the shield HP right if it's cracked you can probably go for the shatter it will break the shield it will kill anyone there. You need to remember what specifically looking at Sigma barrier, looking at Orisa barrier, looking at Ryan barrier, looking at monkey bubble. When is the shield cracked? How much damage does my shatter deal? Right? Most of the time using Ryan as an example, I believe it's severely cracked. It starts to crack at 500. 
Like, it, you can tell it's severely damaged, right? Well, 500, a little bit more of a hit. You can shatter. The shatter will deal the damage, break the shield, he'll be shattered. Right? Same thing can happen with other other barriers. I don't know the numbers exactly of when the crack shows, but most of the time when the crack is showing in any of those shield characters, your shatter, I believe majority of the time, again, I'm don't take me fully for it, but I'm quite confident, will break the shield and shatter them. Right? So you need to keep that in mind. You don't have to just wait for there to be no shield. You can play around knowing what the shield HP is and use your shatter to destroy the shield and shatter them at the same time, right? Key thing that you can think about and look for, right? Other thing you can do. Other thing that you can think about, right? Well, you have a Lucio. Speed past the shield. Well, they have a Reinhardt, for example. Or, oh, they have an Orisa. They put a shield down right in front of me. Okay, well, speed amp past the shield and shatter the people behind the shield. Right? You have now taken out the variable of waiting for the shield game, just taking it into your own hands and just beating a little bit past, right? Just so that you can hit it. Something I can add to this is there. there's some sort of double, double boop uh, shatter as well. I don't know if it's still in the game, but I remember when I used to be coaching last year, it was a part of the game where you could, you pretty much jump and then you bounce. So I'll do like, I'll say bounce. You could bounce and you would bounce just a little bit past the shot, like past the shield after like a speed boost or something, and then you would shatter it. So you can do stuff like that. I don't know if the tech is still in there, but it is tech that you could do if it hasn't been patched yet. Aside from that, what else can you do? Well, let's bring in another solo play that you could do. You can hide in a corner. Yes, I understand. This is a cheesy play. But it can work. Pull it out once a map. Pull it out once a series. Pull it out once in a while. What's once in a while? That's up to you. But you can do that. There are lots of times, let's say that the you're about to capture the objective point. Okay, they're about to capture, well, on the payload map, we gotta stop this, we gotta stop this. They'll run trying to get to the objective. They won't even know they won't even check their corners. They won't even know. You hit a free five man shutter. Boom, just like that, easy, right? But you need to understand when to go for this cheesy play. And the big way to go for this play is when the enemy is pressured, so they have to do something. They know that they have to do this one thing. They, they don't have time for this, right? They need to do this. That is when doing these kind of plays is the way to go, right? Maybe it's 30 seconds left. Forget about they have to touch the objective. 30 seconds left. Oh my gosh, we we got to go. We have one fight. Like if we want to get one good fight, we got to go now. We got to go now. Won't check the corner. Bang, shatter. Kills everybody. You don't have any alts up online? Okay, well, enemy, you're a little bit pressured at that point, but that is something you could do as well. You're making a play at that point. A little bit different, right? So a lot of the time it's when the enemy is pressured or you need to make a play. Right? So we'll do it up here. We'll do it like this. All right, what's what's another thing that we can do? Well, hey, we're going back to it. You fake a fire strike, right? Get into the, your opponent's head. Again, this goes back to the mind game thing, right? Is he going to fire strike? Is he not going to fire strike? What is he going to do, right? That's the key thing you got to think about. There are a lot of other different ways you can look to land a shatter. The key thing that I'm going to say here is you can use a plethora of different abilities to help you land a shatter as well. So the last point I'll leave you with is is utilize team abilities to help. I brought up speed shatter as an example. Because most of the time when you're playing Reinhardt, you have Lucio that will always be there. But you won't always have a McCree. You won't always have a May. You won't always have a Doomfist. You can use Doomfist Punch. You can use May for her freeze. 
You can use McCree Flash, right? The point is, you can ask your teammates for abilities to combo them so that you can land that shatter more easily as well. That being said, these are the key things to focus on for Reinhardt in terms of his ability usage and in terms of his fundamentals and how they apply. But again, a lot of this aside from the shatter, you're seeing how pin, fire strike, shield add layers to these fundamentals of movement and positioning. And that's a key thing that we're going to focus on when we look at this VOD. So, looking at this VOD here, we're going to look at Gator's POV. We might look a little bit at Super 2. But these are the key things that we need to really think about. So, you know the song and dance? I'm going to play this at one point speed. We're going to look at this a little bit. And I'm going to go do live commentary as this kind of happens, right? So we see a great example of this, a mirror matchup, right? Brawl versus Brawl. Let's see how Gator does. Gator walks out. He sees a wall. He starts to walk forward. He instantly is toggling his shield. See how he's toggling? He's holding it there, but he's playing the truck. Playing. Right? Why is he holding? Why is he toggling sometimes? Well, he has to toggle here because of the May freeze. The May CC can mess him up, right? What you see here, right? Sometimes he's holding his shield behind terrain because he can see that he's not fully blocking his hitbox. Sometimes he's just toggling it so he can move. But when you see him moving forward, right, compared to standing still, he's toggling it, trying to go to the next terrain area. He's using his HP to absorb some of the damage as well, right? In terms of engaging there, we saw every time a May wall came out, that is when he was moving forward. That's when he was making a play. That is when he was aggressing. He wasn't aggressing just to aggress. He was aggressing for a purpose. We see the TP'd up top. Goes for a fire strike right out of choke. Choyobin wasn't ready for it. He lands a huge fire strike. He has shatter instantly. Wall comes up. He starts to walk up. Again, look where he's playing. He's playing between the pillar and the cart so that he has terrain to go through. He has a shield here to walk forward. Looks for a shatter. He only hits one. He, again, went for the guaranteed shatter. He saw that Nero wasn't behind the shield enough, that's why he went for the shatter there. Instead of going for the big play shatter, right? Is he holding his shield up a little bit too much when he's trying to close distance? I think so. But he's not doing a poor job here, right? So we see we're trying, he's trying to see where they're going for. He sees that they're going left, right? He's not holding his shield there. He's just walking because he's not absorbing any sort of damage. There he put his shield up to block Troyobin's bomb. But you see now they have an advantage. They capture the point. He doesn't really care for his life that much. He's just swinging to get as much damage down as possible. Right? So, so far, what's the big thing that we can take away from Gator's perspective just from watching the first few minutes? This guy, there's a reason why he does every action that he moves in. There's a default position he's always going for. He's always by some sort of terrain, right? He's never in the open exposing himself. And when he is... You see him always having his shield fully popped, right? And he's always trying to move to another terrain, another area where he can reduce his hitbox. So you see here, he's fighting for this. He was waiting for the wall to engage. He decides to back up a little bit. He's unable to block the shatter because he was in a poor position. And from that boop, that happened from FD God. Atlanta loses this fight because again, he's fighting in a two open area. His sides are exposed. His back might not be exposed. So he has, he's taking a lot of damage from the front. He's not able to guard his side against those boops. He has to rely on a teammate to clear out FD God. FD God did some sort of rollout potentially. They weren't able to stop him. He gets displaced, right? They're not fighting in a good position. All right, they walk out. Let's see how he does this. Do you see how he's holding the shield for the rotation? He sees that they're there. He's holding the shield for the rotation. Now he's chilling because he knows his shield is low. He goes up, he gets spoofed again. Again, not enjoying... Ooh. Talk about that pin in a second. Not enjoying how he's using his shield. He's holding it a little too long in my case. But, again, he's cautious of the May because he doesn't want to get frozen and slowed down. That pin there. Pin is what opened up that fight for Atlanta. This goes back to what I was talking about being unpredictable with the pin. That could have been 50-50. Hit or miss. Sometimes you need to do that as Ryan to change the tempo. They were losing that neutral, so he decided to go for a pin. He was able to hit a pin. He aimed for the wall on the left so he wouldn't be too far from his team. He was able to hit the pin, and they were able to get a successful fight from that. 
You see, he's holding a close corner. He tried to go for a cheeky shatter there. He wasn't able to hit it because shoot super held the shield around the corner. Again, only issue with Gator is Gator from going for a cheeky play like that. He was in a very poor position. Instead of going forward and trying to full send at that point, he decided to try to back up and survive. He's holding his shield so he doesn't get frozen. I tried to have him toggle it there, to be honest with you, but again, I'm not sure where the Mei was fully in that fight. So again, caution to the wind always against the Mei. All right. So we see where payload is we see that he starts by the tower there he understands that they're going for a fight he swings and uses the wall as another side cover in this situation he's just holding a shield so that he doesn't really build ult charge for the enemy team and again now he's not holding a shield because he knows that they're up numbers he knows he can swing he can know he knows he can do this kind of stuff right in terms of the fire strike we see him using it in tight areas or before fights start as he's walking and taking space so far, what do I think? Not bad with his play. It's just the shield usage that I'm a little bit skeptical about. But again, you need to be careful about your shield usage against the Mei. Because if you have it down, Mei can freeze you, slow you down, it could disrupt you very heavily. Do I think he should hold shield here? I don't think so. I think he he's holding it for no real reason there. They know that they go for an aggressive action there. So they see that because the Mei wall went down, just want to double check and confirm. I don't know if Iris started with the uh, Baptiste alt there. Yeah, ba they start with the Baptiste alt there. Gator instantly runs forward so that he can try to get some sort of value with it. They drop a lot of alts. They drop Kai's alt as well. He gets a lot of general damage down. But again, we back up. We look at Gator before this engagement went down, right? So we'll back up a few seconds here. Usually I wouldn't do this, but I want to show this as a point and slow it down here. So, right here. He's swinging. He's in the open right now. So if I were to pause here, look where he is. So, what does this mean? Well, this means one of two things. Number one, he's probably not going to get this beat. Because the sim wall is guarding against the beat. Second thing to keep in mind, well, since he's on this right side, right, and he ran, the wall is a little bit late from Pelican here, he has no cover to play around. He's now running in the open, hoping, hoping that he's going to get a lot of cleave value and they get a kill there. He's unable to get the kill here, and now watch what ends up happening in this third perspective. He now goes to the wall, look at his HP. He has half HP while he was swinging. He wasn't trying to reduce his... Uh, or flutter, flutter his shield or anything. He wasn't. He was just trying to do as much damage because he wanted. He knew we were going for the engagement there. Again, key thing to keep in mind when you're doing this. This is fine if your whole team's full sending with you. His whole team was not full sending with him. Pelicans was nowhere to be seen. Kai's nowhere to be seen. It is not a good kind of look, I would say. And that's why he's so low. That's why the lamp was forced. That's why he is pretty much going to die in this fight, right? As they are moving forward, Kai, Pelican, Masa, Gator has to back up. And he's taking so much damage, or he's taken so much damage at this point. And he's moving so far away from land because of the mail that he's now just going to die. And they're completely split in this fight, right? Again, key thing to keep in mind why it's so important to play terrain to terrain, not focus so much on your shield there shield isn't going to keep you alive in a lot of those situations a lot of those situations shield is really bad because you can't fight back you are very defensive always holding your shield right that is the scary part so they walk up again he's holding a shield it charges he has a big fire strike there. They're all clumped up, so he went for a big fire strike there. Gained a lot of percentage. It's great that he's using the wall on the left to try to guard, right? He has his shield up, but you see him swinging. I like that he's by a corner here. He's by a corner. He's by the cart. He can use that to kind of go back and forth and just always kind of jiggle around terrain. That was good. Again, generally speaking, not bad play. 
Do I, would I like it to be better? Yes, I would. Absolutely. Always would like to see better stuff. But it's only his shield usage. That's the big thing that I would say is my big beef with Gator. The shield usage and a little bit of the train usage. Not the best, not prim top all the time. All right, so I'm just speeding forward here just so that we kind of can get past all this kind of extra time. Gonna look at this a little bit more. All right, so we see he's playing by the payload. He has his shield up a little bit here. I want him to rest his shield a little bit more. May wasn't there. He should be using his HP to try and take some damage. He will get the healing back. He also has the cart in front of him here, which he can use very heavily to just LOS, right? LOS, peak, LOS, peak. He has now just wasted his shield. Look at Gator Shield versus Super Shield. Super. 1.2k, pretty much. Gator Shield. 1k. He could have 1.6k right now of a shield. And a lot of this is because it's recharging back, right? Again, small detail, but it's still big, in my opinion. I like that he's using the cart to kind of go back and forth. See how he's swaying back and forth here? I like the fact that he's swaying back and forth from the cart. Seems like the wall disconnected him from his team, and that's what caused him to receive very low HP. Again, I'm not too certain about the shield usage. I want to go back in that fight real quick, and I just want to look to see Nero. Is Nero freezing him during that time? If Nero is trying to freeze him during that time, I'm okay with the shield usage. But if he isn't trying to freeze him during that time, the shield usage is not good. See, look at this. Watch. See how he's holding his shield? He He's back to full HP, yeah. But he's taking so much damage there because he's not... The timing isn't really good here. Watch, look at this. This is the start of the fight. Nero goes for the wall. Nero's freezing. Nero's not even freezing Gator here. I go to Gator's POV. He swings. Let's go back to Nero's to see what Nero's doing. Nero's shooting. He's not even anywhere close to Gator. Gator has still a little bit of armor left. He's okay. He backs up. He has full armor. I would expect him to be pushing. He has nothing. He has Gator's Matrix on him. He can shield back up. Now he should be walking forward again. See how he's backing up? May isn't even freezing him yet. May is doing nothing. He hasn't had to block any sort of May freeze. Even though he is low HP, he has his pocket. He has his team by him. He should be walking forward, completely bullying the fact that Super has no May by him. Right? He does decide to walk back forward, but look at this. He decides to walk back forward at the wrong time. He already walked back too much. He walked too far from the train. So instead of jiggling his shield so that he takes a little bit from his shield and a little bit from his HP, he's just holding. He's not toggling or anything. He finally gets close to the truck, but look at his HP. Right? Even though it's two seconds from that tree to that truck, it's still a large chunk of time. You don't want to waste that large chunk of time, right? So I'm almost, based off of that fight alone, based off of Nero's positioning, I'm going to give him less of the benefit of the doubt when I see him holding his shield now. Because there is no May freezing him. If there is no May freezing him, he should not be holding his shield so much. The only time he should is if he's below half armor. Which in some of these situations, he's not. He's not even toggling, he, especially when he has heals. See, look at that. He could have gone to the yellow truck. He could have kind of toggled a little bit. Instead, he's holding his shield the full time. He has full HP. He has almost no shield. So now May's freezing him. He has to hold up his shield, right? That boot from FD completely destroyed Nero's kind of play there. But to hold here, right? He has to hold the shield, so he can't hold that yellow truck as much as he wants to anymore. So now he's forced back and he has to hold back at this corner. He barely has any shield to block and they're able to rampage through, right? Again, usage, shield. Thumbs down for me. It's not very good. He's holding it for too long. He's not moving quick enough to cover. He's not utilizing this cover enough. 
He's backing up, sure, but he's not taking a lot of punishment from Nero, and he's holding his shield too long to try to receive some of the spam damage or to block some of the spam damage. He needs to hold it less for that. He looks to hold it down. Great shatter. He knows that if he shatters Glister, he could get a kill potentially, and he zones him out from the fight. It's not a huge shatter. He didn't get a lot of people on the ground, but he's now turned to a point where multiple people had to peel for Glister there. Since multiple people had to clear for, or peel sorry, for Glister, it meant less people to help win that fight. Even though they still lose this fight here, Gator's play in that situation made it so Shock had to use three extra ults just to win. So yes, they kind of back well, then they re-aggress with their ults really well. But, in my opinion, that's almost successful for uh, Atlanta. Because now they only have a Shatter to try to snowball the second point, which is very difficult to do. Right? So that Shatter, great. Great game sense from Gator there to try to go for a play like that. Went for the value, he didn't go for the big play. Ah, oh, man, you have a corner right in front of me. Ah, oh, wait, wait, okay. I know I'm going back a lot more than I usually do in these reviews, but there's a reason why. Again, I talked about terrain, how big terrain is, how much is important as Ryan. Watch this. Look at this. Understand why I'm angry. Look at where he is. There is a perfectly good corner over there by him. There's a good doorway there. He doesn't have to hold space. Look what he does. His team is behind him here, right? Not everyone is, but his team, right? Look at this. Who is he shielding for, aside from himself? He's shielding maybe for Iris, but again, Hawk is body blocking so that Iris won't take any damage. You have to also imagine at the same time, Iris is over here. He's, he's not in any sort of danger. Gator's the one up here. All Gator has to do is back up a little bit so he doesn't take that damage, right? He's putting himself in a position so he can hold this tight corner, which is good, but he's not using the wall to his side. So now, he's taking so much damage to his shield. Look at his shield. Do you want to look at Super Shield? The guy has 1.5k shield, and the guy is... In a much more vulnerable position, much more open area than Gator is. Ay, 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 ay. And why is that big? Because now he has a 500 health shield. If Maid decides to try to commit onto him, it's gonna break and he's gonna get killed just like right here. He did get pooped down, yes, but that shield. Manage the shield better, man. You're killing me here, Gator. Killing me, bro. Killing me. It's like main tank syndrome that I've seen where main tanks have to see everything. No, you don't. Just play a corner. Hide. Like, you, you, you're chilling, dude. You know where they're coming from. You have teammates calling that for you, bro. All right. Let's see what ends up happening here. All right. Walking out. On high. He's holding a shield for his team in the open here. Does he use any of his HP? No, he does not. He's used his full shield. He has 970 shield. Let's see how this affects them this fight. Tries to go for a pin on the May. He's unable to. Pretty much holding his shield. He drops right away. It's a little bit unfortunate because he eventually has to drop. Do I think he should have waited for that drop? I do. I think he should have waited till the cart was around this area instead of trying to force a fight. I think what they thought there was since they had a lot of ults on shock side, that's why he dropped. They wanted to try to force as many ults as possible there. I think it's better to try to still win the fight. Um... Try to win the fight, get the card as close as possible, because you're you're gonna get one two fights anyways on here. So I think you should have waited a little bit more. Do I think you should have held the shield in the open that much? Not really, but again, that, now I'm nitpicking at this point. Okay, nitpicking again, going backwards five seconds. Open rotation. He has to hold the shield. That I understand. We back up here. Let's look at where his team is. Let's look at where he is. Team's over here. Iris is in a good position. Iris is right here. Iris can move this way. And he has now LOS majority of the team. Pelican should be with Gator anyways. So like Gator holding shield is fine. Kai is TPing. Where is he TPing to actually? I don't even know where the TP is. Is it behind them? TP is behind them. He has TP behind them. But he's also in a position where he could zip this way if he needs to. Right? key thing that I'm trying to say is there's a pillar to his right 
You guys should be moving to the pillar. Gator is the one that dictates where his team moves. Remember, I talked about this. As a main tank, yes, pathing is important in a macro sense, but pathing is important as a Reinhardt because wherever you go, your team has to follow you. Like, you're the shield. You're the tank. You're the one that takes space. If you don't know where to go, if you don't know how to position properly, you're going to take a lot of damage, and then you're going to put your team in a really cruddy position. If Gator went towards the right a little bit more here... He would have had terrain. He would have been fine here. He could have chilled. He could have put the rest of his team in good positions. They would have been vibing. But instead, he's he's stuck in the middle, just holding a shield. Like, and again, he's wasting his shield percentage, right? They've walked in. They've closed the distance. That's awesome. That's great. But he has to now be careful walking forward because he had a low shield. They force him back in the spawn. They use Kai's Kai's ultimate as well to kind of hold the space a little bit more. It's now even. Let's see how this goes. Okay, he holds the bomb. He holds shield to try to block the bomb. All right, this is. I don't know where May's freezing him from, but that that is a better shield usage from Gator. Gator is low HP, he starts to back up towards some sort of train. I think he should have used the truck comparatively to the pillar there, but he was scared that Sim would rush onto him. That's completely fine. In terms of the rest of the play from Gator there, Gator did a good job in terms of walking up. Again, he didn't use a lot of his shield, but he's swinging knowing that he should swing. He should swing because he's not in any danger. He's in the fight. He needs to swing. He doesn't have to hold the shield up. The only issue was he didn't block against where the May was. I, myself, think May was probably towards his top left area there. That's why he didn't kind of put the ult up or his shield up. And that's where the issue came in. But regardless, we're seeing him be very aggressive with swinging. He knows when to have his shield up and when to have his shield down. Great block from him. Nice shatter. Even though it, again, only hits Nero, it's not a bad shatter. I'd rather you hit one, like I said, than none. They force out a sim alt from them as well. It's not bad. Again, movement's a little bit iffy from Gator here. Shield management, a little bit iffy from Gator there. But overall, the rest, fire strikes are looking pretty good. I haven't seen a lot of pins from Gator. So again, that in me, that for me, in my opinion, is nice. I like that. It's good. His shatters have looked quite good as well. Like he's he's valuing, he's putting more empathis or empath empathis wow i can't speak today on getting value over getting a big play right which is good all right next thing's next we see that they did the tv behind getter goes for a fire strike in that tight little area by the stairs he sees his team is committing he goes based off of the alt after the wall is down from shock they walk forward, he just starts swinging his hammer. He's not holding a shield. He jiggles it a little bit, his shield and his HP between the two. But again, he's mainly swinging. Good job from Gator to just go very aggressive with his team when they are engaging with an ultimate there. He is doing a great job of identifying when to walk forward. He's doing a little bit better in this area to hold terrain when he's walking forward or playing aggressive, which is fine. That's good. It's easier to do it in this area, to be fair. But, again, again, tight area. He goes for the fire strike because of the window in front of him. I like that he's using the cart. He's using the corner. He backs up with his shield. This is great. Holding shield a little too long, buddy. Just drop it and play by a corner or the cart. Okay, instead of playing the corner or the cart, he decides to go back on the high ground instead. That's okay as well. He doesn't have to be on the ground all the time. Okay, he goes back onto the ground. Okay. He's playing in a very... He's trying to play two count of the gateway there. They force the TP again back right. We see the TP, like we talked about from before, from Glister to try to kind of get past that choke. Great shatter. He sees Ryan's not close by. He just goes for the easy two-man shatter there. End up eating the males as well. And again, he, he's not scared. He's just swinging on these guys because he knows that he can, again, swing. They're up numbers. He has people by him. He's not concerned. And that's it for this Atlanta VOD of Gator vs. Reinhardt. Let's take a quick look, to be fair, 
at our kind of little table here, see what he does well, what he didn't do well. So, movement. We talked about this a lot, right? He is doing a fantastic job of utilizing these two points here, right? When numbers are up and when numbers are down, what is he doing? When numbers are up, he is slowly and steady, steadily playing the game. He's not rushing anything. When numbers are down, he is making a play. We saw him try to make a play on the pin from an attack. When they were losing the neutral fight, he went for a pin. He ended up doing well. They ended up getting pretty much, I believe, winning the fight from there. Even though they weren't down numbers, they were about to be. They were slowly losing that neutral fight. He's engaging exactly like we talked about. He's only engaging with Maywalls. He's engaging when they're starting with ultimates. He is not leading anything else. He's waiting for something to allow for him to lead. In terms of his shield usage, in terms of positioning, he is playing terrain a little bit. He is playing terrain and avoiding the open areas a bit. Again, not a fan of this. His shield usage needs to be better. In my opinion, he is not doing a good job with shield usage. I think he needs to play terrain a little bit better as well. Um, wasn't doing the best of jobs for both of those. In terms of the rest, his pin usage, his shatter usage, his fire strike usage, fire strike, tight areas. He was using it quite often in those tight areas. In terms of pins, we saw this happen multiple times. He didn't counter the enemy pin because we didn't see a lot of pins in that match, but we did see him look for pins when they were potentially down members we did look to see him do that when walls were nearby a little bit in terms of the shatters big point for me number one point value over big plays he went for it multiple times right overall good kind of identification of how to play reinhardt it highlighted the key things to look for in Reinhardt and how the fundamentals really evolve with these abilities and we see how much you know playing the terrain and I hope you saw how much utilizing the shield and juggling between your HP and shield or you know being by terrain how important it is even though Gator in my opinion could have done it better Gator still was doing the stuff we were talking about just not as much as I would have liked him to and it did allow him to survive areas a little bit longer as well so that's it for the Reinhardt guide for today, looking at Gator's POV specifically.